Cognitive Interactive is not just an organization that provides an ed education uh, plan for computer literacy. It is a place where you're able to feel like yourself, you're able to learn at your own pace, and you're able to interact with people who have just the same abilities that you have. We are here today from New Age Consulting because you are ready to make a move. You're ready to take Cognitive Interactive a step further and hopefully provide enough of your services across Canada. My name is Devin, these are my colleagues Amber and Jessica, and we'll go forward and tell you about our action plan. First off, we just want to set up a couple goals. We want to ensure that your organization is able to grow. We want to make sure it just doesn't grow locally, but as a national organization. We want to be able to have parts in Vancouver, Toronto, Winnipeg, etc. From there, we want to make sure it's actually efficient. We want to ensure that your money is being earned in an efficient way and is being spent just as efficiently. And also we want to keep in mind that we want to make a huge impact in the community that you are located in. We don't want to just make a dollar, we want to ensure that dollar is spent wisely and is spent in the correct manners where you're able to touch every single person that comes through your doors. Now let's just identify a couple of problems that your organization is currently facing. First off, you're, the biggest problem, biggest problem is that you're unsure, do you go the not-for-profit route or do you develop a social enterprise? From there, it links to stability. Are you stable? Are you financially stable? Are you able to ensure that every that you're able to replicate this program in other cities, or was it just a one one hit wonder in your own city? And from there, expansion. That links straight to expansion. We, right now, you're kind of currently struggling on how to expand, and we are here today to tell you how exactly to do that. So moving forward, we analyzed your organization to figure out where are you strongest and where can we elaborate and work for. So first of all, you do have some opportunities for support from the government, whether it's through your social enterprise or through a not-for-profit route. There are certain ways that the government can help you out, as well as there's expansion variability. So whether you go with a not-for-profit or social enterprise, that can depend on your way you can work with grants and which ones you can apply for and what kind of people you can approach. This moves into your economic um, analysis where you can work with as I said, there are different grants that makes a big difference moving forward, and we'll get in more into that later, depending on the route that we showed you today. Socially, you are doing an amazing job helping people who need help. You're allowing them to feel independent and empowered in a way that they may not have anywhere else. Currently, you have established that you are not, like more in a niche market, not anybody else is doing what you do, which is amazing. And that allowed, and you also did an environment that offers low anxiety in a collaborative environment with people who with, they, with whom they feel accepted. Yeah, also, technologically, we have established that you have a huge amount of empowerment and places that you can work with, especially with the Kitchener and Waterloo region, which is a huge tech hub for Canada. Environmentally, you offer a sense of belonging. That sense of belonging is so important to people uh, with even Asperger's for with the, and um, you also create a safe environment. Our decision criteria moving forward today was, are we going to go the social enterprise route, or did you want to stay as a not-for-profit? Both being very beneficial options. However, we have decided today to take you on a, so, a journey of, a journey of, um, a journey of, as you'll see here, an outline that is created through I just say decision criteria that Jessica's going to explain. So looking here, we have decided to look through the decision criteria focusing on four main pillars for your organization. Whether it has a big enough of impact on the community, the vision alignment with that you have for your organization currently, the financial sustainability for your organization, as well as the operational goals moving forward, making sure that the, the operation continues and it continues to grow. So as you can see here, working with our rubric where one has a low impact, it doesn't really work well with what you're wanting to do, and then high meaning that it's going to work really well, it's going to reinforce you moving forward. We have established that based on these numbers, moving forward, a social enterprise is the best option for you. And we're going to talk about that with Amber here. I got so excited about the social enterprise, that's why I couldn't describe it to you before. <laughs> I know exactly what we're going to do, and I was just too excited to tell you about joining a social enterprise. 
That's because we at New Age Consulting are so excited about the, about the potential of the expansion plan of being a social enterprise. A little bit of the benefits of being a social enterprise is that your growth potential is uh, it's limitless. You have full control right now to do whatever you believe you can do, and we at New Age Consulting believe in you and believe that you have the ability to touch every single one of the 250,000 people that are affected by autism within Canada. We believe that by going establishing yourself as a social enterprise, you have, you're able to be efficient and financially secure in a long-term solution. That solution that we have for you is going to be overlooked in an implementation plan, then I'll be back. All right, so first off, it's just kind of a quick overview of what exactly we're implementing and the time frame. So as you can see, it's illustrated in six month increments just to account for your three year goal of reaching 10 cities. So in order to do that, we first start off with just the planning stage just to do the critical thinking, what we have to get done in order to extend these affiliations across Canada, followed by a Kickstarter campaign, which we will dive into a little bit, uh, a little bit later on just to kind of give a little more information on that as well as you'll continue with the re, uh, releasing of our leasing agreement, which we will, once again, go through, followed by a marketing campaign, as well as our investors relations. So what we have, so what we have created for you is a technological solution that, encompass, that encompasses technology that is already existing in the current marketplace to create a standardized lesson plan that you are going to be licensing to establish businesses that already are looking to diversify their existing product lines and, and offer a community impact through their existing plans. So what we have for you is... Uh, is what we have for you is a plan that is going to require a little bit of strategic partnerships to start off. What we want to do is take your existing five current business models that you have in place and develop them into a standardized lesson plan. What we need from that though is the help of tech, as the help of technological, as the help of a technological company that can help us create a, a create a, a diverse lesson plan that is able to be licensed and sold out to existing technology to existing franchise models. What we are looking to do is take a strategic partnership with a company such as LeapFrog, and LeapFrog is being, and LeapFrog is being targeted because of their incorporation and their, and their involvement with developmental, uh, with developmental uh, educational tools. We also can look at Intel, Google, and grad programs that focus on autism research or are looking to increase their corporate social responsibility within these markets. What we need them to do is to create the lesson plan into a, into a franchisable, licensable model of the existing plans that you have. So the resources are in place, we just need to create the technological solution through these partnerships which we will be, which we will be getting their investment in by offering a 5% stake in our company for $15,000 to create this technology and so that we are able to patent it out and to license it out to different companies. So what the curriculum is going to include is training and development, a grading rubric and lesson plans, and separate, and so what this is going to be is that we are targeting branches such as Sylvan Learning Center and the corporate head office of that. We want to take the existing plan that you currently have, create the technology for it, then go to the existing models that already exist, such as Sylvan, educational learning centers, universities, and other uh, educational respected established in, uh, environments where they are able to purchase our plan and purchase our curriculum to run into their product lines. What we will provide is the training and development for this, a grading rubric and lesson plan, and all of the resources associated with that. So whether it be the lesson plans, the training and development, the tests that they need to give, the existing games that they already have in place, and the marketing tools required for that. And that brings us into our licensing model. So like we said before, we are planning on licensing your current uh, academic uh, plan. However, we're going to revamp like Amber just went through. So essentially it is the standardized lesson plan of five key subjects, ranging from the intermediate to the advanced computer, um, computer lessons, as well as just the how to develop a game, as well as the introductory, what is game development itself. We are going to utilize the existing infrastructure that you currently have, as well, this will help us reach a geographical rule. It'll help us reach far, a uh, far net, essentially in Canada, because we're able to utilize the internet and, you, and transfer all of this information across to different locations, depending on what partners we actually allocated within the next couple months. 
From there, this will in turn create an efficient working model that you'll both be able to replicate depending on where you're going. Um, like we said before, we are specifically targeting the Sylvan Learning programs as well as other provincial government programs that are utilizing currently similar models to what your organization has. And this will just uh, create a diversity effect and it will show that you are able to change uh, no matter what city you go to. Moving forward, of course you're looking for where is this money going, where is it coming from, that's really important anywhere in business, especially with social enterprise. So when we're looking into the licensing program, the initial investment for that company will be $15,000 and that will be waived for the first year, will be the, will be the royalty. On future years, however, that royalty will be 7% of the year earnings coming from your program. So let's say there's $5,000 coming from serving liter Sylvan Learning Center within one city. You can get 7% of that per, for your earnings for that year. And then as well as that, that's just for the one block. So for each additional lesson out of the five that is purchased, that's more money going back to you. So with that, for the first year, we're looking at the potential income of $150,000, which is based on a geographic area, which is all variable, which will go into the, in the future. Also, there are the affiliate considerations. When you're going into licensing, you have certain affiliates, you have to work with your standardization. You don't want to just let anybody have your program. You don't want to just let anybody work with it and just do with what they want. So with that, you're going to want to go to organizations that have a minimum of five years of experience in any kind of educational level. So with Servant Silver Learning Center, you're looking for people who already have the experience. They're not just somebody who just walked straight out of grad school and they're just out of um, like the education program. It's people who know what they're doing and that are willing to work with children with autism and understand what that means. As well as you're gonna go through the full screening process. As, we, as you discussed with us, you do have a screening process when it comes to your instructors. Currently, it'll be similar to that. You're gonna see it go through the police screening and make sure everything like that is done. As well as your financial constraints, making sure that they can afford your program making sure that you'll be able to get your money back and that it's feasible. And through that, you'll go through an annual review, making sure the program is sustainable year after year and that it is actually being carried through in the way that you are looking for. You will have control of your program because that is what you are looking for. Making sure that it's followed through and it's stable <coughs> across all of Canada moving forward. So moving forward with that, that just goes to show with the affiliate considerations that it isn't just Sylvan that we're going for. Obviously a big risk is, what if Sylvan doesn't want us? Then where does this plan go? This plan has other options and it has other alleys. We also are looking at going to educational institutions. Does a high school, does a provincial high school maybe want to take this on? Does an elementary want to take it on as an after school program? Maybe there's extracurricular activities that are able to come through. Also with that, we are looking at the intensive background search going into a private model of this. 250,000 Canadians are affected by autism. With that comes their families and their teachers that have worked with them and many other educational and educational leaders and individuals in the community that are looking to make a change. Could this be a model you per could this be an, a, a, a model that you purchase maybe post retirement? Maybe you decide that you worked with special needs children for a long time and you want to take on the personal the personal uh, the personal adoption of creating something in your community that makes a difference that doesn't currently exist. We believe that that is why that this the licensing model is the best for you to reach your growth potential. You're wanting to get to as many cities as you can. You want to reach as many people as you can. And that is why going through the educational in institutions, the private model, and the Sylvan Corporate Learning Centers, we believe that this plan is the, is the largest for growth potential throughout Canada, and it's able to grow fast and wide. Now that brings us to our fourth, uh, fourth plan. Essentially, it's the Kickstarter campaign that I mentioned earlier. So essentially, this is going to actually kickstart the whole idea of creating your own organization apart from what you started in the incubator. You want to show that you are here to stay and how better way to do that than do a publicly funded campaign through Kickstarter. This is targeted specifically at the people who are affected by autism. They are either the family, the friends, or the people themselves who want to give back to the community and want to see that other people are able to take advantage of programs such as yours. Essentially, it will uh, cost us, we would have to hire a videographer but that's just a minimalistic cost. That'll create just one promotional video that we're able to showcase the amount of work that your organization has done throughout 
the past years, as well as to show where you want to go, where you see yourself in the future, and how to get there with the money that is provided through this campaign. It will be used as also as a publicity um, aspect, just to showcase that your organization is going to go nationally. So we're able to then show in Toronto as well as show in Montreal, uh, Winnipeg, Halifax that, hey, there's an organization out there that helps out autism kids learn how to develop video games, learn how to interact with people, learn how to be their own person without relying on social con uh, constraints. Uh, going over the financials for year one, Jessica will take you through that. So as you discussed, you'll need an office space. You established that it was about $2,000 per month. Going forward, you're looking at that $24,000 for that full year. After that, with videographer, we estimate, estimated that to be about that $2,000. And then cost employees, estimate about that $50,000. Moving forward, you might need to hire some more people. And of course, that is variable depending on how many courses that you offer during the next year. Not just part of the licensing model, but what you currently offer. So that's a revenue uh, that is total $76,000 and based on revenues of just the licensing, which is $75,000, and then you have grants over and above that and other revenue streams that we discussed earlier, you're definitely going to be in the black. So essentially what we have for you today in what we have for you today is the licensing plan that is going to incorporate technology, it's going to incorporate a licensing model, it's going to incorporate uh, geographical reach, and it's going to have a community impact. One way that we're going to market this uh, into all the different communities that we go to is that we are going to go to lo lo local charities uh, dealing with um, autistic individuals, and we are going to say if we can help launch this in your community with your support, we are willing to do a 2% uh, donation back from all the proceeds that we raise in each of these in each of these in each of these cities and their local developments we believe that this was strategic because we want to ensure that even though you did establish as, establish as a social enterprise that you're not just trying to turn into a profitable business model we want to show that there is the community impact however going as a social enterprise we took that route because then you were able to regain full control and grow in a fast and efficient pace just as you stated that you wanted to your goals for that you wanted to be in as many cities as you can in three years, and we thought that this was the best way to do that. So if you leverage all the charities that deal with autistic individuals, and you show them, look at these lesson plans that we have. You have individuals that are so involved in these plans, and we can show you the success rates that we've had through our testimonials, through our Kickstarter video, through all of the roads we have, that if we take uh, that if we take your model and we're able to expand it through as many cities as we can, that we will have a an, oh, long-lasting community impact. That brings us to our risk and mitigations. So first off, with any plan, there is risk, and you have to take them in order to succeed, in order to further grow your organization. So as a couple of risks that we did identify was the pretty obvious one is no partnerships. So what happens if we approach all these companies and, and they say, you know what, we're unable to partner with you at this time due to your growth so strategy is not effective enough. However, we disagree with that. We will go and look for other avenues such as a small business loan just to get us in the first stage of your cycle. From there, you have to look at the licensing. If companies do not want to license uh, our model, there is other routes where we could do a joint venture with other organizations similar to ours, just to add more value to your organization and to the plan itself. From there, we have to look at what this Kickstarter promotional campaign actually fails. Do we, do we get that money? Unfortunately not with Kickstarter, you don't make any money unless you reach your goal. However, this still is a great opportunity to show off your organization and what it does for its community. We said before this is used as sort of a publicity stunt or as a media campaign, just so that it's a free way where you could reach a lot of people in a short amount of time. From there, it brings us to our last risk, which would be the Autism Ontario becomes upset. Their organization doesn't like how you are switching over to the social enterprise route. However, we're going to stress that we are returning a 5% of our total revenue to their charity to ensure that they're able to grow just as much as your organization grows. We want to ensure that everyone's impacted equally and you're able to make that impact last. We want to achieve um, we want to achieve excellence across the board to ensure that your organization is here to stay and we believe our plan is the way to do it. We would like to thank you and we would uh, like to open up the floors for questions. Okay, so, uh, sorry if I start? Please. Uh, okay, 
Um, much of my success will be based upon selling, creating my programs and then selling them to um, educational institutions and um, to then license that program. Besides my 2% donation that I'm going to offer uh, as sort of that give back social enterprise, what else are the reasons why they would buy my program over my competitors? What differentiates me? What differentiates, me, what differentiates you is that you are the current only player in this game right now. You have the entire market share. You currently don't have competitors, which is amazing, which is why we wanted to take the social enterprise route. We wanted to take off fast and hard because you are the only player in this game right now. Currently with no competitors, you have the full advantage. So what, what you have is a big market of individuals who have yet to be untouched. So if you can be the, fir the first mover in this market, we believe that people will invest their, their thoughts and their beliefs and their money into you because you don't have, a comp you don't have competitors in the spot right now. Okay, so I have to do this pretty quickly. Um, what, from an HR perspective, how many people am I gonna need on my team to, to help create that? You have kind of that $50,000 salary for people on my team, what does what does that look like? So first off, just to address that, that fifty thousand dollars will be locate allocated within the first year. So that's startup costs within the your current staff that you do have. Currently, there is just a couple of you that are you that are being paid itself. The rest you do rely on volunteers. So as the year progresses, as we're able to reach out to more of the organizations for partnerships, we're able to increase the amount of employees in your organization to ensure that we do run efficiently. Because that was a big thing. We want to make sure your organization runs efficiently and effectively, effectively and still be able to create an impact at it. So right now, our projected kind of employee, just give you a number itself, within the first year, we're hoping to reach between the five and the 10 employee mark, as well as uh, continue to grow it as needed because essentially we are just staying located in your own organization, in your hometown, and then you'll just be having uh, facilitators to go out and open up the other locations with uh, the le leasees. Okay. Uh, uh, Two-part question. Uh, clarify, 76K cost versus 75 in revenue. My math said that's a 1K loss, so the part one, just clarify that. The licensing, do you have a sense that Sylvan and others go into licensing arrangements? part of your program. It's an amazing program. It works with autistic children that maybe they aren't working with right now. So you're helping them expand their reach. You're helping them expand their name saying, hey, we're from Silver and Learning Center and we have this amazing program that helps empower kids and young adults that have autism and help them become independent. But parent wouldn't want their child to be part of that. What individual would we want to be part of that organization? And to answer your first part of your question about the financials itself. So the 75K is essentially the licensing agreement itself. That is the revenue that we project you'll be able to gain uh, from that. However, there is other sources of revenue. For one is being a small portion is the Kickstarter campaign, but as well as your also your regular, um, app, your regular fees that comes into your organization to actually run these programs. So right now we just kind of want to uh, contrast what we're bringing in uh, this year or moving forward with what it actually costs for that one year um, expenditure. So essentially right now you are at 1000 like you said, $1,000 loss. However, once we do add in your other considerations, you will be within, uh, you'll be in the positive and you will see the, the potential of this program. I had the goal to generate a $60,000 salary for myself out of this company in year one. Uh, am I going to be able to do that in year one? And if not, how soon will I be able to anticipate that will happen? Uh, that, is a, that is a great, great question. We felt that it was necessary to invest a little bit more into your organization within the first six months. So right now you're not allocated your full $60,000. However, we do project once we do start generating revenue through our licensing agreements within the first year to the second year, you will <coughs> see a, a drastic improvement in the amount of salary that you will, you will earn. And I believe that will over, they'll take over the fact that you weren't earning as high or potentially as high as you thought you would be. However, we feel if you do it this way, we're able to then keep your business, your organization, and grow for the next 10 years and go, go uh, forward from there. Thank you.